here's what we do know. It, this virus did not originate in the Wuhan animal market. Epidemiologists who are widely respected from China who have published a study in the International Journal of the Lancet have demonstrated that several of the original cases did not have any contact with that food market. The virus went into that food market before it came out of that food market. So we don't know where it originated, but we do know that we have to get to the bottom of that. We also know that just a few miles away from that food market is China's only biosafety level four super laboratory that in researches human infectious diseases. Now, we don't have evidence that this disease originated there, but because of China's du duplicity and dishonesty from the beginning, we need to at least ask the question to see what the evidence says. And China right now is not giving any evidence on that question at all. So, so this super lab that you refer to, this super lab is the only one of its kind in this area, in Wuhan, in the province, uh, th that, that area, and, and what do they do with the super lab? It's unclear, Maria. Uh, we have such laboratories ourselves in the United States run by our military in large part done for preventative purposes or trying to discover vaccines or to protect our own soldiers. China is obviously very secretive about what happens at the Wuhan laboratory. We don't know, again, where this virus originated. That's why it's so important that we at least ask the questions and get the evidence. But China continues to block our ability to ask those questions. Burden of proof right now is on the Chinese Communist Party and the ambassador uh, of China and his fellow communists. They have lied consistently about this virus from the beginning, so we should not take their word at face value. By consistently lying to its own people and to the world, they have created a situation where we have not been able to take the preventative measures that we might have, and we have not been able to err on the side of caution. Tell me what the downplaying of this has done. In other words, the Chinese knew about the coronavirus back in November of 2019. They proceeded to send a delegation to the White House to shake everybody's hand to do a phase one China deal. They sent the largest ever delegation to Davos at the end of January. Do you think the downplaying of this virus virus has actually exacerbated it. Oh, there's no doubt about that, Maria. You know, the first cases indicated in early December, which meant they were transmitted sometime in November. China finally fessed up to the WHO on December 31st. If they had t taken action weeks earlier, not only might their own people have been better protected, but the entire world might have been better protected. This is just a pattern of Chinese dishonesty from the very beginning, which continues to this very day. Just a few days ago, we went from a situation where they were reporting only a couple hundred more cases or maybe a thousand more cases a day to almost 14,000 cases in a single day. That wasn't the result of any scientific discovery. That was a political decision to finally reveal what they knew to be true, yet they are still covering up in all likelihood the number of cases and deaths from coronavirus inside of China. A new report published by some Chinese scientists say COVID-19 might not have come from the fish market in Wuhan as initially believed, but from a research facility nearby. As their Kim Yosun reports, they're still doing more research, however, to add to their findings. Amid the continued spread of the COVID-19 virus, there's rising speculation the virus could have originated from a government laboratory in Wuhan, rather than the widely held belief that it emerged from the city's Huanan seafood markets. Citing a report published by Chinese scientists, a Chinese-language newspaper published in Hong Kong, Ming Pao, and the British daily The Mirror, explained Sunday that the Wuhan Center for Disease Control, or WHCDC, could have spawned the contagion in Hubei province. According to the report penned by Bo Tao Xiao and Lei Xiao of the South China University of Technology, the research lab, which is only 280 meters away from the Huanan Seafood Market, kept disease-ridden animals, including more than 600 bats. It's stated that while it's plausible the virus was leaked from the lab and contaminated initial patients in this epidemic, more solid evidence is required through future study. The report also raised the possibility that the Wuhan Institute of Virology could have leaked the virus while it was carrying out tests involving Chinese horseshoe bats. Against such a backdrop, an article published by the Washington Times late last month is garnering attention as it raised the possibility that the disastrous outbreak could be the accidental result of biological weapons research. 
This comes as a renowned law professor at Tsinghua University in Beijing, Xu Jianren, is known to be missing after publicly condemning Chinese President Xi Jinping for failing to contain the spread of the virus at an early stage. He even added the condemnation could be the last message of his life. Kim Hyo-san, Arirá News. Recently, a 2018 Chinese TV segment has sparked discussion online. Chen Hu, a former official at China's 302 military hospital, talking about the possibility of using gene editing to create a super virus. It does seem to me that the uh, Wuhan BSL-4 uh, is the source of the uh, coronavirus, yes. And uh, my guess is that uh, they were researching uh, SARS uh, and they weaponized it further by giving it uh, gain of fu- gain of function uh, properties, which means it could be more lethal. And indeed, the uh, latest report now is its uh, 15% fatality rate, which is more than uh, SARS, and 83% infection rate. So a uh, typical gain of function, uh, it, it travels in the air. So it could reach out maybe six feet or more from someone uh, emitting a sneeze uh, or a cough. Uh, Likewise, uh, this is uh, a specially designated uh, WHO research lab. So the WHO is in on it and they knew full well what was going on there. Yes, it's also been reported that Chinese scientists uh, stole coronavirus uh, materials from the Canadian lab at uh, Winnipeg. Winnipeg uh, is Canada's foremost center for research, developing, testing biological warfare weapons. Uh, It's along the lines of uh, Fort Detrick uh, here in the United States of America. And yeah, I I have three degrees from Harvard. Would not surprise me if uh, (laughs) something was being stolen out of Harvard uh, to to turn over to China. I, I read that report. I don't know what was in those vials one way or the other. But the bottom line is, uh, I my opinion is, uh, and I drafted the U.S. domestic implementing legislation for the Biological Weapons Convention that was approved unanimously by both houses of the United States Congress, signed into law by President Bush Sr., that uh, it appears the uh, uh, coronavirus that we're dealing with here is an offensive biological warfare weapon that leaked out of that uh, Wuhan BSL-4. I'm not saying uh, it it was done deliberately, but there have been previous reports of uh, problems with that lab and things leaking out of it. And I'm afraid that is uh, what we are dealing with today. The Chinese government under uh, Xi and his uh, comrades there have been covering this up from the get-go. The first reported case was December 1. So they've been sitting on this until they couldn't anymore. And everything uh, they're telling you is a lie, it's propaganda. The WHO still refuses to declare a uh, global health emergency. Its head Tedros was over there shaking hands with Xi and uh, smiling and yucking it up. The WHO is in on it. They've approved many of these uh, BSL-4 labs. They know exactly what's going on. And that is a uh, WHO uh, research to prove laboratory. So they know what's going on too. So you can't really believe anything the uh, WHO is telling you about this. Uh, either they're up to their eyeballs in it, in my opinion. This tweet from a Chinese government spokesperson claiming that the U.S. Army brought the virus to Wuhan. China says the U.S. Army may have brought the new coronavirus disease to Wuhan, the epicenter of the virus, while Iran's Supreme Leader Ayatollah Ali Khamenei also implied the outbreak can be part of a biological attack by the U.S.
There are some Iranian officials claiming that it is a biological weapon. We've got some Russian officials claiming that it is as well, and they're pointing the finger at the United States. Israel, some Israeli officials are also saying, yeah, it might be a biological weapon. They're claiming it was China that unleashed it. China hasn't really said anything, and the United States is saying, no, that is a hoax. So let's go ahead and break this down a bit. The former Iranian president came out claiming that the novel coronavirus was a biological weapon man-made in in a lab, Mahmoud Ahmadinejad, sorry about that, claim, this is his tweet, he says, it is clear to the world that the mutated coronavirus was produced in lab manufactured by the warfare stockhouses of biological war belonging to world powers and that it constitutes a threat on humanity more destructive than the other weapons that target humanity. So he also tweeted out a letter that he had sent to the, uh, the Secretary General of the United Nations and in it talks about how they believe that this was a biological man-made weapon that was unleashed in a lab, but he doesn't give any evidence of this. But uh, we will see where there might be a little bit of, you know, reason to be suspicious. Also, Javad Zarif, Iran's foreign minister, called the sanctions on Iran an act of medical terrorism. So he also at first made some, uh, in, he insinuated that this could have been a biological weapon made in a lab unleashed on the Iranian people. And then he's also come out saying that the sanctions on Iran that the United States has are an act of medical ter uh, terrorism. Iran is not able to get all the supplies that they need, and they're, they're very much suffering because of the sanctions. And that is causing... Uh, you know, a lot of panic and a lot of a, a lot of death and a lot of and the virus is very strong in Iran. So um, this is what Javid Zarif says in his tweet. He says real Donald Trump is maliciously tightening U.S. illegal sanctions with aim of draining Iran's resources needed in the fight against COVID-19 while our citizens are dying from it. The world can no longer be silent as U.S. economic terrorism is supplanted by its medical terrorism. So Iran has the last count that I saw, which was, I think, yesterday, they've had about 429 deaths and over uh, 10,000 people infected. And they've now asked the International Monetary Fund for $5 billion in emergency funding. And they're saying that the United States, they haven't really placed blame on exactly who they think unleashed this virus on them, but they do feel like they had this unleashed on them, that this is not something that naturally would have occurred in Iran. And let's go ahead and take a look at a map to see what they're talking about, because it does look a little bit suspicious. When you look at the map, look at Iran here with 10,075 cases. Now, this was from yesterday, but look at the surrounding areas. Look at Afghanistan, seven cases in Afghanistan. Look at over here in Iraq, 71 cases in Iraq. Look at uh, the, the Arabian Peninsula. I mean, you've got 80, 74, 18, 45 in Saudi Arabia. You know, you've got all of these small all numbers surrounding Iran, but you've got 10,075 cases in Iran. And if you look at the countries in between Iran and China, look at here again, if you look at the map, you've got India with only 73. I mean, India is a densely populated country and they only have 73, yet Iran has 10,075. Now, some people say, well, the reason why Iran got it was because China and Iran have a strong trade partnership. Well, China has a strong trade partnership with many countries around the world, and yet those countries are not seeing thousands and thousands of coronavirus cases, not like Iran. And Iran is having a, a, a really difficult time managing the virus. They've got a, a high death rate going on in Iran. So people are kind of raising an eyebrow and saying this looks a little bit suspicious that, you know, look at over here when you when you take a look at all of the the areas surrounding China, um, you know, China, of course, had over 80,000 cases. And you've got, look at these numbers, 49, 10, 39, 73, 1, 1, hardly any cases. And somehow the virus was able to jump from China all the way to Iran with 10,000 cases in Iran, and yet all the surrounding nations don't have nearly as many, including nations that have very strong trade agreements with China. The United States imports more from China than I think any other country, and yet we're not seeing 10,000 cases. I mean, not yet. We definitely could because the virus spreads, but for Iran to get it so quickly and so intensely, this is why people are raising an eyebrow to it. And it is suspect. Now look, when you think of Italy, 
which we're going to get to Italy on this because the Russian officials, um, they've pointed a finger saying that Italy is also a target of this type of terrorism. And we'll get to why that might be. But, you know, when you first look at the the pandemic that's going on and you see China with 80,000, OK, that makes sense because that's ground zero. Right. But uh, and, and Italy makes a lot of sense, too. I was living in Italy last year and I can tell you there are loads and loads, millions and millions of Chinese tourists in Italy. Italy is the number one tourist destination in the world. There are millions of Chinese tourists in Italy. So it makes a lot of sense that Italy would be a very hard hit country considering it's like one giant amusement park in Italy. Um, I mean, the tourism in Italy is is massive. So that to me made sense. But then the question of Iran with 10,000 cases, that doesn't make as much sense. Iran is not a big tourist destination. You know, who, what, what, how many Chinese are showing up in Iran for tourism? Um, that doesn't really, it, that doesn't make as much sense. So it is a bit eyebrow raising. It's a bit eyebrow raising. Now, what do the Russians have to say? So some Russian officials blame the United States. They say this was a biological weapon unleashed by the United States. Igor Nikolin, he was an official who used to be on the Russian Biological Weapons Committee. He claimed that the coronavirus is an American biological weapon that is used to defeat its enemies, including China and Iran. He said, listen, animals in China have been sold and consumed and eaten for thousands of years, but the coronavirus has not been transmitted to humans all of those years, but in the last 20. So he's saying... Um, you know, they've been eating these animals forever. And so why suddenly are all these viruses cropping out of China from eating animals? Now, I think a really logical explanation to that would be that we now pump animals with loads of hormones and all kinds of things in order to mass produce um, animals. So sure, there is. To me, it makes logical sense that we would see a lot more viruses and issues coming from animals because we're what we feed the animals is genetically modified and we're genetically modifying the animals. So, you know, it's kind of bound to get back at you. But he's saying, you know, his theory is, listen, something else is going on. He says that this is the fourth most prevalent virus in China. He says, I think it's not a coincidence, but it is a design. He says, quote, because the Americans appear. Now, this I had to translate these quotes from uh, they originally were in Russian and then they were in Persian. And I actually translated these from Persian. So they're not exact, but uh, they're pretty close. He says, quote, because the Americans appear to be bound by a series of agreements, they have moved labs outside of the United States to prevent catastrophes in their country. He said of the reason for such labs around China. So he was saying that there's all of these labs that the United States has set up all around China in various regions, including in South Korea, in Taiwan, uh, in Pakistan, all around the world, the United States has set up these medical labs. And he's saying that the United States doesn't want them on American soil, so we've been putting them in other countries. He says, we know that something happened, such as the outbreak of anthrax virus in the U.S. Army's Institute of Infectious Diseases in Washington, D.C. in 2008. The Americans also refused to sign the Nuclear Non-Proliferation Treaty and said we would not implement it because we have trade secrets and do not want to tell anyone what we're doing. Beyond that, thousands of Chinese tourists and businessmen come to, come to Russia, but there are no viruses. So he's saying, look, no virus in Russia. We got thousands of Chinese tourists, thousands of Chinese business people coming here. But suddenly Iran has got all of these, has, has all these virus cases. Why not Russia? When he was asked, do you believe this virus was designed and programmed and was also transmitted directly from China to Iran? And it's not a coincidence. He said, I believe this is not a coincidence, but rather a virus that goes selectively to countries that are considered enemies of the United States, namely China, Iran and some EU countries, including Italy, as we've seen. So. Uh, he's saying, connect the dots. This is suspect. Chinese businessmen, Chinese tourists go everywhere in the world. And yet really hard hit countries are China, Iran and Italy. This is what the Russian official is saying. Now, some Israeli officials also believe it very well could be a biological weapon that could have come from China. Orly Levy, she's a, meter, a member of the Israeli Knesset. That's their 
parliament. That's their Congress. Um, she says, quote, this is not a result of eating bat soup, but was a lab engineered virus in some form or another. She said in an interview with Army Radio, Levy added that the state of Israel is used to combating biological weapons and it is impossible that life should stop because of the coronavirus. Retired Lieutenant Colonel Danny Shahom, who holds a doctorate in medical microbiology and who for over 20 years was a senior analyst for Israeli Defense Forces Intelligence for Biological and Chemical Warfare, said, so that guy seems pretty legit. He says, quote, coronaviruses, particularly SARS, have been studying and studied in the Wuhan Institute of Virology and are probably held therein, said Shahom. In principle, outward virus infiltration might take place as either a leakage or as an indoor unnoticed infection of a person that normally went out of the concerned facility. This could have been the case with the Wuhan Institute of Virology, but so far there isn't evidence or indication for such incident. So this guy who's a reputable guy says, we don't have any indication indication that this is what happened, but it very well could have happened. Now, they're pointing the finger at China. So he's saying, look, the Wuhan Institute of Virology, they've been studying viruses. They're doing weird stuff with viruses in there. So the virus could have somehow leaked from the facility or maybe somebody who works inside the facility accidentally got infected and they left the facility and then they went and infected a bunch of people in Wuhan. He's saying that's pretty possible. Could have happened. We don't have evidence of it, but it's possible. So the, the question that the Russians brought up about Italy so the question many of us have is, well, why would Italy be a target? I mean, it kind of makes more sense why China, if the United States did unleash this as a biological weapon in some way, it makes sense why China would be would be a target. Uh, we're in a trade war with China. We are trying to pressure them into bending in the way that we want. It would make sense that you would want to maybe unleash a virus that's going to be a bit, uh, uh, you know, it's going to keep them busy for a while and it potentially is going to harm their economy, kind of making them reach a point of desperation. That makes a bit of sense. Same thing with Iran, right? I mean, if you were a terrorist organization or if you were a government that didn't like another government and you wanted to somehow cripple them, I mean, we've seen that we've been doing economic sanctions on the countries we don't like. We continue to economically sanction them. The Iranian people have been rallying. So they've been having these economic sanctions against them from the United States. And the Iranian people understand that the reason why their economy is tanking is because the United States has been putting these debilitating sanctions on them. And they've been rallying over and over and continuing to point the finger at the United States. They're unwilling to topple their own government, which is why you'd put in economic sanctions. You do it so that you pressure the people to a point to where they hit a point of desperation and they topple their own government. They start blaming their own government. Well, it wasn't really working in Iran. It's also not working in Venezuela. Um, but when uh, the Iranian, so the, the idea would be to get them to a point of desperation. So if you were to unleash a virus in Iran that sort of began to put a lot of pressure on their medical system and in turn a lot of pressure on the government, you might be able to then make the change you want to make, right? So that's the theory around that. But why Italy? That's a big question. Why Italy? If that was the case. Now, Italy, to me, it makes sense, again, why Italy would end up with so much of the virus. There's a lot of Chinese tourists in Italy, more than anywhere else in the world, uh, maybe minus the United States. There's a lot of Chinese tourists in the United States. But, but okay, so let's, let's entertain this. Why Italy? Well, because about a year ago, Italy signed up, unbeknownst to the European Union and unbeknownst to the United States, everybody was blindsided last March in 2019, when Italy signed up to be a part of China's new Silk Road. Nobody knew that the Italians were going to do this. The U.S. government were, was blindsided by it. Mike Pompeo said he was blindsided. Everybody said, well, you know, we didn't know what the Italians were doing. Sure, they were going to China a lot. These Italian officials were going to China. But they said, the Italians, they're kind of sporadic. Uh, they're, we don't really know what they're doing. And so we just didn't realize that they were signing up for the new China Silk Road which was a slap in the face to the EU and a slap in the face to the United States. So this is coming from the New York Times. It says here, this was from March of 2019, Italy's deal with China signals a shift as U.S. influence recedes. This month, as the United States continued to engage in a trade standoff with China and leaders of the European Union banded together to demand an end to unfair Chinese business practices, Italy took another route, China's new Silk Road. 
In a move that signaled geopolitical shifts from west to east, Italy broke with its European and American allies during last week's visit by President Xi Jinping of China and became the first member of the group of seven major economies to officially sign up to China's vast new One Belt, One Road global infrastructure project. In front of an audience of top diplomats, diplomats, prelates, and government officials all eager to learn more about China, Mr. Conte, which is the Italian prime minister, spoke admiringly of China's efforts to become a world leader in, quote, technology and innovation. Leadership that we know is very contested by the United States. So the Italians knew what they were doing. They knew this would be a slap in the, in the face of the United States, and they publicly stated it says the United States, in fact, sought to stop Italy's joining of the Silk Road. This week, Secretary of State Mike Pompeo said he was saddened by the development. So they were blindsided by this, and then they tried to talk Italy out of this. Italy said, no way, we're signing up for the new Silk Road. This is going to be good for the Italian people. And they said, so we're going to go ahead and do this partnership with China. That was a huge blow to the United States. Then you would see why there would be this desire to take a virus that seems to originate from China and try to cripple Italy. Because then that would make Italy say, maybe we don't want to have this Silk Road, this like direct link from China to Italy where they can import goods, services and viruses. That would be a something to uh, make Italy think, right? So when you go down that road and you see that there's reasons for our country to not like Iran and to want to debilitate the Iranian econ economy, and when you then connect the dots of saying, you know, we didn't like the fact that Italy signed up for China's new Silk Road, and so maybe we'll think we'll make Italy think twice about this by, by uh, unleashing a virus on them that would make them maybe rethink it. So the other big question to ask then is, um, has the U.S. ever used biological weapons before? You know, is this something that is in the United States arsenal? And the answer is, look, I mean, the U.S. had an official biological warfare program that officially began in 1943, and it officially did end in 1969. However, we do know that the United States has been using biological weapons well before 1943. We know the colonizers were using biological weapons when they unleashed smallpox on the natives. And there's reason to believe that the United States never really fully stopped using and developing biological weapons. During the official program of those 27 years, the, the U.S. developed six mass-produced battle-ready biological weapons in the form of agents that caused anthrax, rabbit fever, uh, brucellosis, Q fever, Venezuelan equine encephalitis virus, botulism. Also, a type of food poisoning was produced as an incapacitating agent. In addition to the agents that were ready to be used, the U.S. program conducted research into the weaponization of more than 20 other agents, including smallpox, plague, yellow fever, typhus, bird flu, and the toxin ricin. Besides the numerous pathogens that afflict human beings, the U.S. had developed an arsenal of anti-agricultural biological agents. These included rice stem rust spores and the causative agent of rice blasts. And uh, a U.S. facility at Fort Terry focused primarily on anti-animal biological agents. The first agent that was a candidate for development was foot and mouth disease. So besides foot and mouth disease, five other top secret biological weapons projects were commissioned on Plum Island. The other four programs researched included RVF, Rinderpest, African Swine Fever, plus 11 miscellaneous exotic animal diseases. The 11 miscellaneous pathogens were blue tongue virus, bovine influenza, bovine virus diarrhea, foul plague, goal, uh, goat pneumo, uh, pneumo, pneumoniatitis, mycobacteria, N virus, Newcastle disease, sheep pox, Tesher's disease, and vesicular stomatitis. So I think the answer to has the U.S. ever used biological weapons before is a resounding yes. The United States has unleashed these types of warfare in the past in order to uh, get, peop get uh, whatever we want in wartime or maybe outside of wartime. So... Um, now, you know, the problem with biological weapons is you can't control them, right? They're harder to control 
and you're going to end up with collateral damage. But is the United States okay with collateral damage? Well, yeah, we've seen that the U.S. is okay with collateral damage. When we bomb nations, when you know we, we take out buses of kids and, and villages with children and women, and um, you know, collateral damage is just part of the game. And if they, if we're going to say, you know, if we're going to go down this road, and if this virus was unleashed on China as a biological weapon, and then on a, on Iran and on Italy, then perhaps those that decided to unleash it felt maybe a little morally better about it because they realize it doesn't affect kids. Uh, healthy adults don't really get affected. It's just more of a, it definitely affects older people who are high risk individuals. And it's definitely debilitating to an economy. Look what it's done to those nations. Now look what it's also starting to do in the United States. It's also created a lot of panic, but look at what our government was doing, right? Our government was sitting there saying, this is no big deal. So did they maybe know? Did they understand what they were doing? And they thought, no, we got it controlled and contained. It's only in those countries that we didn't like, the countries we decided to unleash it on, and we're going to be fine over here. And maybe that's why our government's response was so flippant about the virus. Um, but you know what? The, then, then you have to take into consideration travel patterns and, and a whole host of other things. And so in order to maybe also not have the blame put on the United States, once Russian officials and Iranian officials were starting to say, hey, something's a bit suspect. And once the Israeli officials came out saying, yeah, I think this might be a biological weapon, um, what, you know, then you you got to you got to shield yourself from blame. and You got to say, OK, now we're going to start shutting down things like big events and NBA and and all of these things. So I just wanted to put this out there because it is being talked about in the news in uh, obviously not in our mainstream outlets, but the what the Iranian officials are claiming of this being a biological weapon that's been unleashed on them, uh, what the Russian officials are saying, this is being reported around the world. It's just not being reported as much here in the United States. So I wanted to bring your attention to it. It is interesting. It's interesting to think about. And it's possible. در سراسر کشور بخش های بیمارستانیمون رو آماده کردیم امکانات وسیع همکارانمون رو و تجهیزاتی که لازم بوده به میدان آوردیم اما واقعیت این است که ما هفته نسبتا سختی رو در پیش داریم Iran being Israel's biggest problem. The head of Iran's civil defense 
Brigadier General uh, Rolam Reza Jalali just said the same thing. He said this looks like a biological warfare attack against Iran and China. And a new study uh, coming out of China from uh, Tongji University in Shanghai entitled Single Cell RNA Expression Profiling of ACE2, the putative receptor of Wuhan 2019 coronavirus, shows that this virus has been engineered to target East, target East Asians and presumably a version of it has been perhaps released and developed by the Israelis to target Iranians. So we are seeing biological warfare on a massive scale. The United States is a country that has been waging biological warfare on and off ever since it exterminated Native Americans by giving them smallpox blankets. During the Korean War, the United States dropped literally hundreds of thousands of bombs bearing plague, diphtheria, and other diseases on China and North Korea and uh, covered it up. Um, and the book, This Must Be the Place, uh, gives the details on that. The United States uh, waged biological warfare against its own Congress in 2001 with the anthrax component of the 9-11 anthrax false flag operation, which terrorized Tom Daschle and Patrick Leahy, uh, the leaders of the movement, to block the Patriot Act uh, into giving up and allowing the Patriot Act. So the United States is run by, uh, by lunatics, by psychopaths who are entirely capable of launching World War III by way of a biological warfare attack on China and Iran with the Iran component presumably led by Israel. That's uh, the most likely explanation for what we're seeing. And in that context, this move by these uh, Israel lobbies that are presumably behind this biological warfare attack and this launching of what could become World War III are pressuring the United States to try to help this plague spread in Iran as much as possible by preventing Iran from getting any of the medicines and medical equipment that it would need to fight this virus. And the United States is pursuing this kind of policy right now. They, Trump has not allowed medical equipment and supplies to go through to Iran. A number of interesting developments here in the United States and in China suggest that there is something very strange going on regarding the coronavirus and the U.S. government. We are now hearing from uh, the Chinese government itself, as well as from Chinese social media, which is normally restricted. Um, but in this case, it actually seems that people are being encouraged to pose the same kinds of questions that we just heard from the Ministry of Foreign Affairs spokesman, uh, Geng Shuang, who suggested that the United States military brought coronavirus to China. Here in the United States, the National Security Council, under direct orders from the White House, has sealed the top emergency meetings on this topic and classified them. Only people with top secret clearances have been allowed to participate, which rules out most of the medical experts who should have been there. So putting these two facts together, first, that the rumors on Chinese social media that were already very widespread uh, a month ago or more and now have gotten the official stamp of approval that the coronavirus outbreak was an act of biological warfare by the United States, this seems to be becoming the official position of the Chinese government. And that is quite concerning because if indeed the U.S. government or its allies or out-of-control rogue agencies within it did, in fact, whether deliberately, as is the most likely possibility, or accidentally, or some combination thereof, perhaps a clumsy effort by someone outside of the normal chain of command, whatever the uh, truth is about this, this could set off a an escalation that could easily lead to World War III. Iran has apparently been targeted with its top leaders targeted for uh, perhaps an especially virulent strain of coronavirus. All of this does suggest a biowarfare component, or at least that possibility. And the fact that uh, Trump's people have classified their meetings, that there is a complete lack of transparency here on this topic, is, is very, very worrisome. با آزمایشگاه های مختلف ترسته گذاشتیم جمع بندی کردیم هم 24 م هم قبلش و هیچ کدام از آزمایشگاه رفرنس کشور وجود بیماری کرونا رو در داخل کشور تایید نمی کرد مفهوم وضعیت سفید این بوده که در واقع بیماری به صورت رسمی تایید نشده ممکنه جایی باشه ولی ما نتونستیم تشخیص بده باشیم
حسن آقای جلالی در خصوص بیوتروریستی بودن ویروس کرونا شایبه های بسیاری مطرح شده نظر سازمان پدافند غیر عامل در این باره چیه؟ به صورت قاطع نمیشه گفت که جنگ بیولوژیک هست ولی بخش زیادی از شرایط و ویژگی هاشو داره که باید زمان بدنیم تا بشه تکمیل کرد پس یک نظری که به هر حال قرینه به صحت هست و اون چیزی که حالا میفرمایید این که شرایط ویژگی ها رو داره این هستش که جنگ بیولوژیک میتونه باشه بخش زیادی از ویژگی های جنگ بیولوژیک رو داره حتی اگر که چین یا آمریکا یا اروپایی ها رو هم تحت تاثیر قرار داده ببینید یه نقشه اینجا وجود داره که آزمایشگاه دوربین بگیرید که آزمایشگاه بیولوژیک امریکا در کل منطقه اطراف ما هست که بین ایران دوربر ایران و روسیه و چین هست حدود 25 تا آزمایشگاه سطح 4 اینجا هست که در واقع قابلیت آنالیز و بررسی ویروس های این دست از ویروس های خطرناک و در واقع در ویروس های نوپدید و ویروس های ایربورد رو داره اینجا بنابراین این قابلیت میتونه به ما بشه بده که اون کدام کشور هست که این قابلیت رو داره البته تو دنیا روسیه و چین همین قابلیت ها رو دارن نه که فقط امریکا ولی این گسترش آزمایشگاه امریکایی دوربر ما هست که معلوم میشه کجا هست و چه اقدامات اونجا میتونه انجام کسی هم روشون نظراتی نداره أعتقد أنها ليست صدفة بل أعتقد أن الفيروس مختار جدا يصل إلى البلدان التي تعتبر خصوم الولايات المتحدة الأمريكية الصين، إيران، بعض بلدان الاتحاد الأوروبي بما في ذلك إيطاليا يعتقد الكثيرون أن هناك ميول للروسيا كثيرة وفي هذه البلدان نرى عدد المصابين أكثر لا أعتقد أن هذا عبارة عن مصادفة إنما هذه هي الخطة عند النخب العالمية نعم الحكومة العالمية هذا هو المصطلح الصائب على الأقل هم يسمون نفسهم لم ينتخبهم أحد إلى هناك لكنهم هذا ما يعتقدونهم عن أنفسهم الأسر المئتان التي لديها أربعون تريليون دولار يعتقدون أنهم أهم من في هذه الأرض ويملكون أغلب وسائل الإعلام وهم يصورون أفلام هوليوود مثل الجائحة أي أنهم يسيطرون على عقول البشرية ويطرحون فكرة أن البشرية يجب تقليصها إلى عشر عددها الحالي هل فعلا يمكن إنتاج أسلحة بيولوجية موجهة إلى أمة معينة أو قومية معينة تصيبها ولا تصيب قوما آخر يعني هنالك حديث حتى عن أن الإسرائيليين هكذا يفكرون أو أنتجوا شكلا من أشكال السلاح البيولوجي الذي يقتل الفلسطينيين ولكنه لا يؤذي السكان إسرائيل الآخرين هل هذا صحيح ممكن؟ هذه الأحاديث موجودة أعرف أنه منذ بضع سنوات حدث وباء غريب ليس في أفريقيا بل في جزيرة مداغشقر الطاعون الرئوي أنه أمر فظيع لم يكن يقتل إلا المحليين ولكنه لم يصب السياح الأوروبيين ولا حتى العرق الأصفر هناك طبعا أسلحة مثل إيبولا وإنفلونزا الطيور وفيروس كورونا الذي يصيب الصينيين الآن أكثر والشعوب الآسيوية الأخرى هذه الأسلحة موجودة أي في التاسع والتسعين وضع الأمريكان مهمة نصب أعيمهم وجورج تينت رئيس السي اي اي حين ذاك إلى الرئيس كلينتون قالوا أنهم سينشئون عوامل ممرضة ستؤثر نوعيا على أعراق دون غيرها وها قد مضى عشرون سنة وجاء وقت التجارب المدانية ويبدو أن كوكب الأرض كله تحول إلى حقل تجارب بل أقول أكثر من ذلك أن البلدان الأنجلو ساكسونية عمليا قدمت انذارا بيولوجيا لجميع البلدان غير الناطقة بالإنجليزية إما تعيشون وفق القوانين التي نفرضها عليكم أم أنكم لن تعيشوا على هذا الكوكب إما نقتلكم بسرعة أو نقتلكم ببطء بس هل تعتقد اليوم, اليوم نعم جزء من الحروب 
المعاصرة اليوم بالأمراض بالحروب الجرثومية الجرثومية إيه فليش بدنا نستبعد هذا الموضوع مكرمي هيك عم بسألك هل تعتقد أنه أساس هذا هذه الجرثومة أو هذا الفيروس هو مؤامرة على الصين ما, ما عندي معلومات ما عندي معلومات ما عندي يقين بهذا الموضوع بس م. أنا لا أستبعد نتيجة هذا الاحتدام الشرس بين الولايات المتحدة الأمريكية وبين الصين أنه نعم تلجأ الولايات المتحدة الأمريكية إلى مثل هذه الوسائل الخبيثة في إرجاع أو عرقلة الصين من تصدر المشهد العالمي اقتصاديا في العام 2025 نحن كل نعرف أنه بالعام 2025 الصين ستكون في المرتبة الأولى اقتصاديا وستتراجع قوة أمريكا الاقتصادية هل هذا الفيروس هو نوع من المواجهة مع الصين لإنزالها عن صدارتها أو لعرقلة الوصول إلى هذه الصدارة ما عندي جواب لكن هذا سؤال مشروع هناك علماء كبار أكدوا هذا المفهوم بما في ذلك العالم البيولوجي الروسي السيد إيغور الذي أكد أن هذا الأمر غير طبيعي وهناك علماء كذلك حتى في الولايات المتحدة الأمريكية يقولون أن هذه هذه الفيروسات ليست طبيعية وليست بشرية وإنما مختبرية كانت في السابق تنتشر في الحيوانات الوحشية لكن هذا الفيروس وتركيبته حسب ما أثبتت بعض التقارير المختبرية أنه غير بشري وهذا يمكن أن يكون قد طور في مختبرات خطيرة تستخدم في الحرب الجرثومية ولا ننسى أن أمريكا طبعا هددت ضرب مناطق ثقافية قبل ذلك على لسان الرئيس ترامب ونرى اليوم أن ووهان الصينية هي مدينة ثقافية ومدينة حضارية وليست صناعية ولا تجارية وكذلك مدينة قم المقدسة وهي مدينة ثقافية ودينية بامتياز أنا أعتقد أن هناك ربما استهداف لبعض الشخصيات كذلك الآن قبل قليل انتشر خبر حول وفاة حسين شيخ الإسلام الله يرحمه مساعد وزير الخارجية ودبلوماسي قديم وكذلك بعض الشخصيات التي نراها في البرلمان ومقربة من المرشد الأعلى وفي بعض المؤسسات المهمة وربما ستنال الإعلامين منهم نحن نحن كذلك الآن أمامك وربما لديهم اللقاحات في المستقبل يعني سيظهر هذا الأمر بالتدريج لأنهم هم لا يريدون أن ينشروا هذه اللقاحات في الدول المتورطة الآن والمنكوبة كالصين وإيران وكوريا الجنوبية في الوقت الحاضر لأنهم يريدون أولا رفع الأسعار واستخدام الأمر بصورة تجارية لكن نرى أن حتى مقترح المساعدات الأمريكية الأخيرة إلى إيران ارتبطت بمعلومات دقيقة إذا هم يريدون أن يعرفوا كيف ينتشر هذا الفيروس ليستخدمون ليستخدموه في المستقبل في حروب لكن البعض Paul received his BS and MBA from Wayne State University, PhD from Walden University, and pre-medical curriculum from Fordham University. He is currently at Harvard University for an ALM in biology. His research includes using chaos theory to model financial markets and economic emergence. His work on economic emergence contains new theoretical concepts of economic evolution and the creation of self-organized structures. In addition, Dr. Paul Cottrell has published works from his Harvard University studies in genomics, neurobiology, neurosurgery, endocrinology, and microbiota. My curriculum at, at Harvard dealt with genomics and dealt with cancer biology. So a lot of research in cancer biology deals with infecting tissues, infecting cells. Uh, certain cancers are caused by viruses, not many, but you know a few. But um, virology is part of that curriculum. So we had to learn how to use the NIH databases to do this types, type of research. So what I did was I looked at the, the sequence that the researchers in China provided, the NIH, that's posted on Wikipedia. And anyone could click that link and go to the actual database and look at the actual genomic sequence. So with my knowledge in genomics, what I did was I did what is called a blast search, and I compared that sequence to other organisms. 
to see what type of homology, what type of seed, this, this RNA is an RNA virus. So what type of organisms have a high similarity uh, sequence? So when I did that, about 20 or so organisms popped up and they all were bat SARS. So basically through this, and I, I did a, I did a video that people can, can watch, but, and I show exactly how to do the blast search on this website. It shows, and I might be able to show, share some, some pictures, can try, but, but basically what it shows is that the Wuhan virus or this novel coronavirus, which is a family of viruses, has very high homology to the bat SARS virus. And I have a theory that this potential strain of coronavirus is a mixture of about four of the bat SARS viruses, where it makes it more virulent, where, it, where they're in the genome. It's about a 30,000 base pair genome. And the first half of the genome deals with replication, which is called replicase. It codes for a protein that replicates the RNA and helps to produce some of the protein, the early proteins it needs. And near the end of the genome is called the S protein. And that is the surface coating that hooks onto tissue uh, when it's infecting a host. So when someone breathes in that virus, that S protein is hooking onto a receptor that's in the lung and it allows that virus to get into the cell and start to replicate. I, I also did a video on the, the, the probability of this happening through just natu a, a natural selection in a natural environment. And it's a low probability for these big chunks to just randomly appear in the front of the genome and in the back of the genome on areas that make this virus really susceptible to increased infection. You know, it's focusing on the replication side and it's focusing on the attachment to cellular receptors in our, in our body. So it seems to me that this virus, it evolved and it, it was taken from bat SARS, which uh, it, I can actually give you the number. I, I think it's, I think the, the virus that it evolved from was a KF2944.5.7.1. This is the name of that actual genomic code. And that evolved, maybe naturally, maybe not. And that evolved into a strand that was very similar to an MG strand. So when someone does this blast list, they can see the, the two MG strands, which are a more virulent uh, bat SARS. And it, to me, it seems as though it, it was possible that individuals or an individual took big chunks of virulent sections of previous bat SARS viruses and put it into this Wuhan strain. And when you, you know, do the probability of, of this just naturally happening and being by a weapons lab 20 miles away, it, it's a very low probability, very, very low probability. So it's kind of it, it kind of lends itself to, you know, thinking, well, you know what, this might, this might be a leak from a, a weapons lab or a research lab. I'm not saying that that means that it was done nefariously, but this is a, a potential problem. And this, as it spreads and people get sicker, other components of society will start to break down. Uh, the economics, the, the infrastructure, we're already seeing the, the, the financial markets showing some problems, especially in travel, in the oil market. The S&P 500 you know, went down today. The luxury brands have been selling off. We're also hearing that supplies, medical supplies are starting to run out. If you're treating just one patient and you have a whole staff of, let's say, 15 doctors and nurses that are treating this one patient, Every time that they go in and out of that room, they have to declothe. That material needs to be incinerated. They can't be reused. So they're going to run out of masks. They're going to be running out of gowns. They're going to be running out of 
goggles and stuff like this. And a lot of the manufacturing of these products are made in China. So, so if there is a worldwide contagion that takes place, we will not have the means to be able to curtail it. If it is what I think it is, which is bioengineered, then probably we'll have a much larger effect rate. Individuals are going to be have this, this uh, deep pneumonia type infection and individuals that are immune compromised most likely will not survive it. So I'm not saying that there's going to be millions of people dying from this, but it's very possible to see many hundreds of thousands. The um, incubation period that they're stating in the news right now, between one day to 14 days before you even show signs, that means to uh, be really prepared, like what Diamond's saying, you have to, at a very minimum, need two weeks worth of, of supplies for food, toiletries, and stuff. But if you have it, if you, during this incubation period, and then you, you actually catch the virus, and it, you know, takes you, you know, to sometimes people have a flu for a week or two or three weeks, right? You need like five weeks worth of supplies. Most people do not have that in their pantry. If there is a lockdown or individuals want to, you know, just, you know, stay at home during the, the, you know, these incubation periods, they can't go out. They, you know, there's not going to be enough masks and all that. They, so you're going to, you're going to need supplies. So you have to, you have to have, at least, you know, about five weeks worth of, of provisions. If there is an outbreak in, let's say, a city like New York. You're talking about not just a lockdown for 14 days. You're talking about this virus moving around in a, in a closed environment that could stretch out for six months before it burns itself out. Just think about what happens at work for a normal flu season. There's usually about two months where the flu is just slowly moving around the organization, depending on the size of the organization you work for, right? This is much worse. Here's something that you do not hear reported in the American media. And this isn't in the Russian media either. This is in uh, actually the media in Ukraine. This is a very shocking update on some uh, very surprising allegations about the coronavirus. Buried hazardous containers found buried in the evacuated consulate in Wuhan, China, needs explanation. The Ministry of Foreign Affairs of China formally requested the United States to explain the biohazard containers that were found buried in the evacuated consulate general in Wuhan. The PRC security forces cordoned off other U.S. diplomatic missions in the country. An official statement by the foreign ministry said the containers were found on January 30th, after the U.S. consulate general in Wuhan in full force was evacuated on a special board of the U.S. Air Force in connection with the outbreak of the new virus. The search was carried out after Chinese intelligence passed on some undeniable materials, uh, the contents of which have yet to be disclosed. Since attempts to get comments on official and closed channels within a few days did not lead to clear answers, we decided to move this question to a different level and demand the answers in public. China is also initiating a meeting of the UN Security Council, said Foreign Ministry spokesman Hua Chanyuing. The department said the total of eight containers of biohazard were found. Hinhao News Agency also published their photo in a military warehouse near the consulate. The boxes were wrapped in two layers of tarpaulin and buried in, a back, in the backyard of the consulate general at the depth of one and a half meters. Now one and a half meters for you that don't know is about five feet. The contents are now being studied by the Chinese military biologists. Chinese scientists have found the genome of coronavirus with an autograph or the signature of the American biolaboratory Raven Lab. Scientists from PRC decrypted the 2019 NCOV coronavirus genome and found it in a signature of the American biology laboratory Raven Lab. Specialists talked about their discovery at a press conference in Beijing. A characteristic imprint was found in the structure of single-strand RNA. 
After deciphering one of the sections, the scientists transferred the data to a spectrogram where the letters R, V, N, L, B were clearly visible. According to experts, the likelihood that they appeared spontaneously tends to zero. Random mutations can explain the appearance of this inscription only theoretically. In practice, the well-known Raven, laboratories, Raven Lab Laboratories uses similar coding methods to mark its engineering projects. We have already seen something similar before, and now we are fully confident this is the same label, said Kim Shishon, uh, head of the Shejuan Biology Laboratory. The specialist added that the tag was placed on a site that is usually not readable other than with the use of advanced American technology. However, the developers did not take into the account that by the beginning of 2020, China had a new RNA scanner called Red Dawn, which is not inferior to American counterparts in scanner quality. Information about the find was transferred to the authorities of the PRC. Chinese diplomats have already said they intend to raise the issue with the UN Security Council. Further study of the virus is ongoing. So basically what this is implying is that the, the new coronavirus was probably let loose by the American government. And they took the containers and buried them at the uh, embassy or whatever that happens to be there. So a lot of the people are going to say, do I think it's true? I know you may or may not think it's true. But do I think it's true? Um, you know, I don't know. At this point, I don't really put anything past the American government.